About a week ago, I was in my French 3 class not paying attention to a single thing my teacher was lecturing about because I never do in that class. I was sketching in my sketchbook per usual when I remember that I got some sexy yarns that I impulsively bought from Goodwill the other day. So I came up with a design of what to make out of those yarns and after a few sketches later, I designed this decent sweater ready to be made into reality after I got released from prison. I mean school. I always mix up the two. Anyways, it's pretty much the same thing. When I finally got home, I decided to forget about the design. Until a week later, which is today. It is spring break, actually halfway through the spring break already, and I haven't really got the chance to finish any of my current knitting projects. So what better way is there to solve that problem with many unfinished knitting projects than to start another new knitting project that I might end up not finishing because I get unmotivated. But I'm gonna try to push through since I'm documenting this. Then, yes, I was reading off of a script because I don't really know how to talk properly without stuttering from the top of my head. But it works. It works for me. Step one, gathering materials. What you need is yarn. For this yarn, I'm not quite sure what the recommended needle size is because the label didn't tell me crap since this yarn looks like it was produced in 1985 when my parents were probably in elementary school already. So I'm just gonna guesstimate that it's size five millimeter needle. I'm For me, I'm using a circular needle, but you could also just use straight needles depending on your preferences. And you'll also need some measuring tape, tapestry needles, and some scissors. Step two, knitting a swatch. So I just cast it on 12 stitches, nothing too crazy, and just knitted for 16 rows for the swatch. Step three, taking body measurements. All you gotta measure are waist circumference, pit to pit circumference, length of waist to pit, head circumference, or you can skip this step by just copying off of an already existing top you have. If you're using straight needles, you might want to divide up all the measurements in half, but if you're using circular needles like I am, you don't need to divide at all. Step 4. Measuring swatch want to measure the swatch to figure out how many stitches you got per inch. So to do that, you'll have to measure horizontally and count the amount of stitches there are in an inch. And that'll give you the amount you'll have to knit in width. For me, I just have to knit 4 stitches to get an inch. Then you'll also have to measure vertically to figure out the length. And for me, I have to knit 6 rows to get an inch. And just a side note here, usually you'll have to knit more rows in length to get the same amount of width. Step 5 doing math. As someone who failed geometry last year, I'm not gonna require you to do some crazy math just to knit up some simple sweater. The only math thing you're gonna have to do is just addition, subtraction, multiplication, and probably division, like basic second or third grader logic. If you ever passed grade school, if you didn't, well, I'm sorry for you. So, to knit the waistband portion, you're gonna have to take the amount of stitches per inch and multiply it by the waist circumference. What does that mean? So, for example, I have to knit 4 stitches per inch and my waist circumference is 24 inches. So, I'll have to multiply 4 times 24 inches and that will be the amount you'll have to cast on to the needles. For mine, I want the waistband to be thick, like at least 3 inches thick, so I'm going to be multiplying 6 stitches by 3 inches, which equals to 18 rows, so that's going to be in the, um, the amount, that's going to be the amount of rows I'm going to have to knit. Step 6, knitting the body. So this is how the sweater is kind of looking right now. I've already knitted the waistband part and also the body part, and I'm already starting on the armholes already. And basically, there's just like a white stripe over here and a checkered pattern over here and then another white stripe. For the white stripes, it's only just six. I've only knitted for six rows. And for the checkered intarsia part, I've uh, knitted like eight rows or eight stitches in width and ten rows in length. About the checkered intarsia, I didn't really like how the, the size of the blocks turned out to be. It was a little bit bigger than I uh, originally sketched out because as you can see, it's like the blocks are a little bit smaller and there were like eight blocks at the front. This uh, got me like six blocks at the front. Um, I think I should have done like six stitches and probably eight rows instead of just doing eight stitches in 10 rows. I feel like that, that was a little bit too much. 
but other than that i think it's pretty okay and it's not like i can really go back and fix it now it's kind of too late i also did it for the back this is how the back is looking right now and also as you can see uh oh some of the stitches are getting loose they're escaping i'm just gonna fix that after i film, film this portion but as you can see i have um so when you're doing the armholes part basically you're just gonna have to um separate it if you're knitting on a circular needle because um when you're knitting an armhole you just gotta like separate it because you're literally creating a hole and you can't just go knitting around and around and around if that makes sense so you kind of have to separate it in half and just have to transfer the other half of the stitches in a stick or like a i'm using a double pointed needle but you could use another circular needle or the, just like any stakes that's lying around your house um to hold the stitches for now while you, while you're working on the front or the back portion of it so i think that is pretty much it and also for the increases i did a little bit of an increases on this part only i increased one stitches on both sides for six rows and i'm hoping i'm kind of nervous that it not it's not going to be big enough to fit around my pit to pit circumference because my pit to pit circumference is way bigger than my waist circumference so i'm just hoping that it'll like be stretchy enough to fit around slightly embarrassed right now it's it's not even a big deal but i like to make a big deal out of small little situations like this for some reason uh but anyway i forgot that there was going to be a person coming over to our house to buy my little sister's food truck toy and um i was sitting in this office area right by the entrance i was just uh behind a desk that faces toward the door and we had the door open so there was the screen door right there so that i can see the person whenever they come um and the lady came over and she rang the the ring doorbell and the ring doorbell isn't even that loud and i had headphones on so i couldn't really hear very well so that was like partly my fault too but i, I don't really know how long she's been staying there i assume she probably rang like twice or something like that um hopefully she uh didn't stay there for too long but like <laughs> if she did she was like literally right by the door so she could see my face and I had a resting bee face, like, always, so I probably look hella, hella mad for literally no reason. Uh, it was kind of a awkward transaction. Well, it wasn't actually too bad, I guess. But, um, I survived. Yeah, it, it went pretty okay. You know, I ended up getting the money, so it's, it turned out all fine. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Drink. Fa la la la. Drink. Fa la la la. Step 7. Knitting the turtleneck. So this is the turtleneck and I think I've knitted about like 40 stitches. I only had 40 stitches by the time I have decreased both of the armholes. And I don't really have any shoulder seams but uh, it's fine. It, when I tried it on it fitted me just fine. The reason why I ended up not adding the shoulder seam was because I wanted the neck hole to be big enough to fit through my big head. So uh, that's why it kind of looks a little weird. It kind of looks a little funky, but that's okay. I made it work and I'm going to do the final reveal soon. And I think I uh, did like about 18 rows and I cast it off with a stretchy bind off. So that's why it looks like that. Finally, we've reached to what we have been waiting for all this time, the final reveal. So this is how the knitted tank top ended up looking like at the end, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I wish I made the waistband a little bit tighter so that it fits around my waist. 
um and as you can see i didn't weave in some ends i still need to wa uh, work on that so it's like not completely like 100 percent complete as i said before i didn't really like how big the intarsia squares were and next time i should probably just make the stitches smaller and um also for the turtleneck it ended up looser than i wanted it to be so i'm probably just gonna knit the shoulder seam and make the turtleneck smaller